Um, well, Steve has a very precise vision of what he wants the violins to be doing. And even though he's not a violinist, he actually has a very, very good knowledge base of what a violin can do from his work with the symphonies before. Um, every once in a while, he would ask us to do something that is not intuitive to a violin player. Um, for example, he would ask us to do some guitaristic techniques where we would slide into notes or slide backwards into a note, which is something that we're never required to do in, in the kind of the classic violin repertoire. And it's possible, it's just totally different and something we'd never practiced before. Alex and I, during the uh, four week rehearsal period, were just commenting on how difficult it was to play a passage with, for example, just one finger sliding it around on a fretless instrument. Um, a snippet of music that um, in the Attitude song takes five seconds to hear takes two and a half hours to learn how to execute and there are many moments like that um, in Freak Show the articulation uh, that we we do in um, the 7-8 passage in the middle of the piece uh, is so difficult doing the grace notes with one finger but Steve does it with one finger and when we do it with one finger it's just incredible articulation to coming together and it's what Steve wanted and is possible and he demanded that of us and made it happen. Um, I guess a question that people have for me a lot of times is, tell me, what's it like being on a tour bus full of boys? Um, and I have to say that it is not as glamorous as you'd think it is, but it's much more comfortable than you'd think it is at the same time. Um, these boys on the bus are like my brothers. I've seen them all in their pajamas with their hair sticking out crazily and seen them before they've had their coffee, before they've had their cigarettes, and they are just absolutely adorable in that state, and I'm so comfortable around them. They've seen me as well, um, kind of creeping out of bed, <laughs> my hair all akimbo, and the only word that I can speak is meh. <laughs> the bunk is my little nest when I'm on tour, and I always pick kind of a bottom bunk, on the U.S. tour, my bunk was directly below Steve and Mikey, which is kind of scary when you have to sleep directly underneath your boss and also a very large Australian. <laughs> um, getting out in the morning, you do this little thing where you open the curtain just a little bit and you, you stick your head out just a little bit. Once I did that and I saw Mikey just bounce down <laughs> and land on the ground. The bus reverberated with his landing, and I was very glad that I'd done the check before rolling out. Um, inside the, the bunk, there's enough room for me to get into this position. <laughs> Sometimes this position. <laughs> but most of the times, just this position. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were honestly to look in my bunk at any time, you would see always an unmade bed. You would probably find a shameful pile of lonely, crispy laundry, socks and underwear, impossibly bundled in a very small, small ball. My performance shoes <laughs> relegated into a plastic bag and deodorized heavily and maybe a book that um, I'm reading in the, in the spare moments. Glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> the secret. Um, one of my favorite memories of the U.S. tour was actually nights when Steve would personally make us our own ice cream sundae creation. And it's called Vi Scream. It includes a scoop of vanilla ice cream, chocolate ice cream, sometimes some vanilla chai flavored ice cream, little crumpled up cookie bits, chocolate chip cookie, um, jaggedy chunks of dark chocolate and milk chocolate, and then the final touch is almond butter. And it is delicious beyond words. And even though you eat it and you can feel it in your stomach for the next three days and feel like you'll never eat again, it's worth it. Every bite is worth it.